Welcome, this is Tinashe Mugabe, the JNMN, and here we are in Kwanda. Uh, we, have just, we have just hijacked a moment in trying to take an exploration into some of the overriding themes that are sprouting out of the DNA show. And one of the major ones is early child marriages versus the law. So we have uh, uh, quite a, uh, a number of dignitaries that we have here. And as you can see from my left to my right, indeed we have people who are going to give us an input regarding this topic. So uh, I'm going to allow uh, my friend, I know you know him, but he's going to be the first to introduce himself and we move to the right. Over to you, sir. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, 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 yes. Um, my name is Gabriel Timuzani. Right. I'm an actor and um, a social activist. And yeah, on my right, I've got uh, advocates. My name is Hazel uh, Nyoni, a legal practitioner from the ENSA and the Republic. Currently in private practice, um, in a Okay. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Lecha I'm a business person and the owner of Mount Kazar Church, where we are here in Kwanda. Mm. I want to thank you for accommodating us. Maybe you can give me a pump up for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay, over to you, ma'am. I am Google Mkandla. I'm a registered social worker with the charity organization here. We do community-based activi um, activities. Um, so we mainly focus on child protection here in Gwanda, and it's called Liseho Memorial Trust. Okay. Yeah, children below the age of 18 are our specific interest. Wonderful. Yeah. And very relevant indeed. <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right, well, now over to you, ma'am. You can introduce yourself. Thank you. Um, I'm Dr. James Thank you, my name is Dr. I'm a full time lecturer at Great Global University. I was a brand strategist with Motivation Institute. Thank you, Mr. Mgabe. My name is Wongai Ethel Dingai. I am the co founder of Timba Human Development. I run a business called Timber Human Development, specializing in helping people find their purpose in life, to transform and to live their best possible lives. Because where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Um, our main goal and aim is to help people find their purpose in life. Thank you. Ah, wonderful. So thank you very much all for giving us uh, some introductions. But now we need to move into uh, the actual topic that we have today, early child marriages. So we are going to welcome views from different angles uh, for, from all the panelists uh, regarding the topic, early child marriages uh, versus the law. So I'm going to start with our lawyer, our learned friend here, to give us uh, her own views regarding the same topic. And I think we are liberal to use any language that we want to mm -hmm. so that we can express ourselves better. Me, I'm going to use a little bit of pale Africans here and there. Is it from South Africans? Yeah, from South Africans. Yeah, it's from Africans. Buy a buy a more Africans. Okay, that's fine. Okay, okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I was going to say my name is Wangai Ethel Dingai. I'm a lawyer with Timber Human Development. Um, it is very crucial for us to understand the meaning of a child when it comes to our Zimbabwe laws specifically. What is a child? Who is a child? And uh, in line with our Zimbabwe laws, um, a child is someone who is below the age of what? 18? Or um, the constitution itself, it highlights that a child is someone who is below the age of 18 and who is not able to consent to sexual activities and to marriage. That is what the constitution says. Then there is the Child Act, uh, the Children's Act, uh, in our laws, and also there is the Criminal Code and the Codification Act, the Reform Act. And with that act, it specifies that a child is someone who is below the age of 16, so already there are issues arising there. 
The Constitution, yes, it is supreme in our laws. Mm -hmm. However, some these acts, these subordinate acts, are now saying 16. So there's a debate that arises there. How about someone who's in between 16 and 17? Mm -hmm. Are they a child? Even the definition that is given by the Constitution, it, uh, it leaves a gap. There is a lacuna there. What it says, it says a child in section 81, it says, uh, it defines marriages, and then it says someone who is able to found a family and get married, be it a man to a woman, below the age, above the age of 18. That's the person that can get married. So they can consent to marriage, legally consent to marriage. So that is the definition that is there. We are actually picking out what the Constitution is trying to define. It is open. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it doesn't determine who is a child. It determines who gets married. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's where the issue is. And mm -hmm. then mar with marriages, who governs that? Um, with statistics, I think 34% of the children in Zimbabwe below the age of 16 have already engaged in sexual activities or they have been exposed to forced marriages or even voluntarily they have been married. If you go to the urban, to the rural areas, most of the children, when they say, I'm now seven, I'm now, I'm now in grade seven, I'm done with school, mm -hmm. I now want to get married. Mm -hmm. They're exposed to these things. But how does the law come in now? Is the law protecting the child? Because from that definition, it's hard to protect the child. Let's say someone is uh, at the age of 12 and they are in a relationship. They can consent to having a relationship. They are 12 years and above. But can they consent themselves to having sexual intercourse or to getting married? They cannot do that. Children below the age of 16 and 18 cannot consent to having sexual intercourse or any activities that surround that area. Be it from the Constitution or the Criminal Court or the Children's Act. So I think that is the layout of the definition of a child and the marriages so far. Ah, wonderful. Well needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, our learned friend. But now there seems to be a discrepancy between the reality on the ground and what the law says itself. So what are your comments uh, regarding that issue? She has given us a very profound definition mm. of, what, of what the law is saying, the Constitution is saying. But then, how then do we marry the two? What the, the law is saying and the reality that's on the ground. Maybe in allusion to culture, in allusion to standards, norms and beliefs that mm. we have currently. Uh, what are your comments regarding that? Also, in addition to what you're saying, mm -hmm. you find out that there are societies where it's known mm -hmm. that people are marrying at the age of seven, seven from one. But there seems to be nothing that we are really doing to, to rectify. It's known mm -hmm. that in certain sense, sex, this is what is happening. And they can rightfully claim it. There seems to be a gap. The law says this, but we go on the ground. It's as if we are not seeing it, but it's. It's happening. I don't know. Could there be certain legal provisions that protect certain societies? Like if it's done within a religious context, then it's allowed. I don't know. Probably that's, but that could be an issue. Okay. Uh, and I think okay, ma'am. Yeah. The other thing with, with culture and religion is we get these elders saying, We've done this for years mm -hmm. and it, it's been happening. And now, because of the modernity, you want to say, um, a child below the age of 18 is not mature enough. But um, they can give you an example to say, I was married off at 13, and I'm here today. I gave birth to your mother at 14, but are you not educated? So what's your point? Yeah, I think the issues of culture and religion now, yeah. Okay. No, I think um, <clears throat> the, the, both the, the, the arguments are very sound and, and compelling. However, the discrepancies lies mostly between um, the cultural norms and the tradition that people have been upholding for the longest time versus the, the law that our learned you know, friend has alluded to. And I think once we start devising means and mechanism to marry the two, um, then there will be a paradigm shift in how we, in how we do things and how we, we filter the law down to the ground and make it a point that the people on the ground get to understand what the law says and in the same way, we get to protect the young ones by empowering 
not necessarily them, but empowering the parents to know and understand, you know, the dynamics and the repercussions of that which they're doing. Because in the main, I think the problem is when kids are being forced to do that which they don't understand, mm -hmm. the journey thereof, the consequences, and that which will deprive them their, I don't want to say their well-being, but in the lack of, you know, the right word for now, let me use that, and okay. going forward. And I, I think at the same time, the parents themselves, especially those who were forced to be in such situation, must give an account of the negative things that happened to them and how it deprived them mm -hmm. the joy of life going forward yeah. and, you know, the, the opportunity to go to school, the opportunity to enjoy their, their, their teenage years, you know. And, and I think that will give an insight into what happened in that space. Because many times we talk about these things, yet we don't understand the dynamics that happen on the other side. And I think getting to understand what happens on the other side, especially from those who have been there, it will, it will enlighten us a lot. Okay. Maybe in allusion to what's happening on the other side. Uh, how is, is, is uh, I mean, what's happening regarding early child marriages? How is, how is things happening there? In SA? Yes, yes. Um, I, think, I think it's a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, you go to different countries, you'd find people who are still upholding this um, practice. Uh, and at, at times, people use their culture and tradition to hide um, their silly agendas. Mm -hmm. And I'll put it like that. Okay. And, and I'm, why am I saying that? I'm saying it because the kids, most of the time, they don't understand what they're being put through. Mm -hmm. And they get to be lured by being told, or if you get married, this and this will happen. And they're not told about, amongst other things, the negative things. They're being told, the men will look after you, will be rich and whatnot. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ronondo <laughs> Ndaka <laughs> You understand? Okay. So in the SA, you know, we do have people who are advocating for kids. Um, we do have people who are advocating for um, the constitution, which protects the kids. And I think uh, that needs to be acknowledged and uh, be upholded. But um, um, I think the, the, the message in the main it needs to be filtered down to the ground then people will understand it better and take it upon themselves to protect um, the children. The children, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, okay, over to you, The other issue here, yes, yes. which we have to look at from an African point of view, is the lack of money, or people coming from different backgrounds, yeah. and people are very poor. Mm. And then they believe, even traditionally before, mm -hmm. uh, people used to have a situation whereby if they have got a child care and they see someone like Mr. Munyani, they were having a particular care. Yeah. They were just offload here. Mm -hmm. Munyani say, yeah. here is a woman, they know that Munyani is going to reciprocate, is going to give them about 10 care claims, and yeah. they, yeah. they go. Mm -hmm. That is the situation where which we are finding. The same applies in the church sectors. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are some other churches which have got the tradition of winning off young girls mm -hmm. to be married to certain, especially even older men. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if they are getting married maybe to the same age, it's much better. Mm -hmm. But when he's married, we find that the girl difference, the girl is 14 and the man is about 70. Yeah. It's a problem. That stigma won't come out from that girl. Yeah. The experience which is she's going to get through that is going to be very difficult for her 
That's why I find that sometimes some of them they end up committing suicide. Yes. Because they will not be prepared. Mm -hmm. On the other end, if you tell look at it now, we are living in a global village. We are advocating for women to stand on, on their own. Mm -hmm. We want women to have better education. Mm -hmm. But when she is married now, how will she have a better education? Mm -hmm. She won't. And uh, if she can't have better education, she will be always uh, neglected all the time. Mm -hmm. Those people who married you off, they will have taken the Loola and they, they are gone. Mm -hmm. They are happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the issue. So in other words, you're saying that uh, these kids were sometimes used as instruments in trying to yes, get to cover yes, the, yes. The, the poverty mm -hmm. that because we, I went to a certain uh, area which I can't name mm -hmm. when at the funeral and they said they said to me go to the river and go with the vapashas. I said how can I go with the small vapashas like this? Are they married? They said yes, they are married. And when I looked at the women, they were married to it was very pathetic. Someone was carrying a baby. On the break and walking another one. How old are you? I'm 16. Yeah. Having two, three children, 16. Mm -hmm. uh, even healthier wise, mm -hmm. it will mm -hmm. deprive you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the, that the, um, Mukwena has a point because, mm -hmm. in the main, also, it is the same process that then perpetuates poverty. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you would never have a society that has a changed outlook if we continually subscribe to this kind of norms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe over to you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm. I think uh, the problem is uh, we are not people are not reaching out to mm -hmm. those kids. Some okay. kids are enclosed mm -hmm. in, uh, in wherever they are. You know, there are kids who don't who, who have never visited town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are just in the rural areas. Those mm -hmm. are the, the most people who are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you walk around, you find them with kids. I visited a certain place. They were at the clinic, you know, they were posting around 16, 17 year olds carrying their babies. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, when did we have this baby? At form two, form three? Mm -hmm. And some of them are, most of them are dropouts. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think these kids need, uh, they need exposure. Mm -hmm. Okay. They really need exposure. They will be posting around in that area. I won't mention the, the place. Yeah. They post around, I'm having a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm married. I'm having someone who is out, especially those guys who are out of the country. Yeah. The, uh, what do we call them? Okay. Chibana, Chibana, yeah. yes. All right, all right. Ah, yeah. uh, that's fine. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, okay. we are having two scenarios. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are having these kids who are growing up in rural area who are not exposed. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we are having kids who are growing up in town. The social media which we are in now, yes. yeah. they tend. To, to deprive kids because most of the time, even if you are at home, you find that they are on their phones, they are on laptops. And then most of the things which they see, they TikTok, this and that. And then the curriculum which is there in schools now about reproduction mm -hmm. is another factor because at the end of the day, they want to experiment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, at the end of these days, they want to experiment. Okay. So, you find that a great uh, seven girl in the school will be having a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. They'll be busy on the social media communicating. Okay. At the end of the day, they want to experiment what is they are learning in school. Okay. And at the end of the day, we have got kids here in town mm -hmm. who are more exposed, but they've got children. Exactly. They've got children for no purpose. Okay. Just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, that's fine. Indeed, uh, the discussion is getting to be juicier. Mm -hmm. So for now, we need to take a short break and mm -hmm. we will be bouncing back shortly as we take a further look into this topic we have today. Thank you. For all your consumer agriculture, truck and off-road tires, we'll feed you Balancing and alignment, lights focusing, vehicle servicing and suspension, aluminium rim repairs, and car wash. Arma Tire is your one-stop shop. Visit our fitment center at 18544 Konosamoa Michelle and Nigel Phillips in Harare. Arma Tire is not excluded as one of the outstanding and best fitment centers you can ever find in Harare. 
Amataya driving the theatre. Alright, welcome back. Uh, now uh, let's uh, continue looking deeper into this case, mm -hmm. into this topic actually, because there are no DNA tests. tests. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's fine. I think uh, I'm going to uh, uh, hand it over to you, ma'am. Do Thank you have something you. to contribute on this? I actually topic? do. Um, yeah. So I've got two, two issues I'd like to talk about. Okay. The first one is prioritization of laws mm -hmm. okay. and the priorita pr priorities that the lawmakers are taking. Take, for example, for you to get a driver's license in Zimbabwe, okay. you go through a grueling process. Mm -hmm. And apparently there have been new requirements that have been introduced, age limits and so on. Okay. But no one has ever come up with a procedural um, way of getting into marriage. Mm -hmm. You are told it's blissful. You can look, you will be, it is like your escape if you do get married. Okay. So it, in, at the end of the day, it seems like as if, um, if you are not married, you have not yet achieved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to make it in life, you have to marry, like Mrs. Ndo was saying, mm -hmm. that um, the 17-year-olds are boasting about having children and being married and so on. Okay. So I, I just want to express that I feel that the lawmakers mm -hmm. should prioritize this marriage thing okay. and like to give it the priority it deserves. Okay. Because it's then overlaps into the economy, it overlaps into general societal conditioning of our systems. Then the second thing I'd like to talk about is what uh, Dati Mukwena was talking about, that um, there's these forced marriages, but at the same time, he's talking about social media, where we are saying those children, as defined by the law, are looking to experiment. Like It's as if it's what they want. But I would like to believe it looks like it's what they want because they are coming from a point of ignorance. Because even when the educationalists come up with those curriculum in school, I, I, I don't think their intention is to ruin society. But now if you're coming from a point where the children do not have sufficient information, they really will be propelled to experiment. And the, I mean, the information is there. They can get the information that will fuel that spirit of experimentation. So I think we, that, needs, that needs to be looked into. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Or maybe we also need to look uh, maybe at uh, a point where we're comparing mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the cultural values that used to prevail mm -hmm. and, and what's mm -hmm. happening today. And what's happening today. today. And sure. uh, was it wrong for them to do what they did before? And uh, now looking at the coming in of the law into mm -hmm. our society, mm -hmm. what impact has it brought into the society? Has it really addressed this issue? Uh, is there no conflict uh, that is irresolute between the law and the cultural values that we have as African people? I, I also wanted to come, sorry to be the devil's advocate. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at it, I mean, in the old days, mm -hmm. it, it, it used to be a solution to a financial problem. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you, 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 you are in a situation where you, your poverty is is, is a resident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you have got this child or this girl child who happens to provide a solution to a perennial financial problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with the 10, 15 candles that you are going to get, it transforms your economic outlook. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to also look at it from that dimension to say probably we might be a bit too harsh. Okay. into condemning child marriages. When in fact it could be, uh, uh, I don't have, uh, 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 not everyone's children, but it doesn't it solve a perennial financial problem okay. where a family moves from zero cattle to, to 15, 15. cattle. And the other girl, girl child children are also protected because now the baby now they've got the, the financial resources that mm -hmm. they can look up. Uh, after, after yeah, we are, we are <laughs> sacrificing. Right, right, right. One for many. One for many. No, 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 no. So, 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But I want to say, um, if we look deep in, in, in those families that believe in that notion, you'll find that they stand preference. They, so there's no way you can say the girl child is protected. Mm -hmm. They'll use this one who has been married off as an example to say, you can also bring in more castle for us. And now they are prioritizing boy child education. And we now, as she was saying, we now have constrained human capital because now the girls are now in the households, they are mothers mm -hmm. and, and all those things. So I also want to say um, with um, exposure now, you get to realize that there are lots of aspects that get into being a mother. You know, they were married off at 12 years, but can a 12 year old now manage to carry a baby? You know, like the physical structure of a, of a 12 year old in this generation, you know, there's issues of diet, you know, issues of things that she's exposed to, you know, she, she's still too young to become a, a mother. That's why we have cases of um, girls um, dying um, when, they are, when they are exactly during childbirth. There's those things. There's also issues of mental health that she look at. Now, she's no longer a child, you know. Children must enjoy being children so that when they mature, you mature to be... Um, I don't know how to put it now. A developed adult or developed mm, individual adult. gets to make mm, informed decisions. Because decision. there's no mm. way an 18-year-old kid can make an informed decision. There's things of, we talked about peer pressure. There's also, I would like to call it self pressure it becomes intergenerational to say maybe because my my sister was married i also want to be married or now you're posting around um um so many organizations here in zimbabwe the non-governmental organizations the community-based organizations they're working in across all provinces raising awareness on these things trying to make people realize you know that um you don't have to marry off a girl because you want to have cattle, you know. You can take it to school, she will um, start her own company, start her own private practice, hire other people, make more money and be able to buy whatever it is that she needs in the household. <laughs> they will oh, tell you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, okay. Okay, you can, can go ahead. Um, yeah. Well, I would like to say um, that um, cotton candy dream mm -hmm. when it comes to where we are. Africa, mm -hmm. it's Zimbabwe. There is culture, mm -hmm. there is religion. Mm -hmm. We have a prominent church here yeah. in Zimbabwe, which actually, uh, for the past years, it has been facilitating child marriages. Mm -hmm. And that has been a literal collision between religion, yes. law, and culture. Mm -hmm. Culture, as yes, we see it, it has been dating back from way back. Mm -hmm. But in terms of protecting the child, we get it. The cows are coming in, the wealth is maintained, poverty is eradicated. But can we still say that the law is protecting the children? Are there laws per se? Laws are there. Is there implementation? Zimbabwe, as it stands, it is a signatory uh, to other conventions, international conventions. There's CEDAW, there's the CRC, all in the name of protecting children from mm -hmm. sexual exploitation, from abuse, mm -hmm. physical abuse and mental abuse. So at the moment someone is exposed to child marriages, they get to face all that. Mm -hmm. They are married to a 70 year old, a 14, mm -hmm. they'll hit you. Mm -hmm. But are we only saying uh, these kids are only married because they do not want to? How about the kids that are married because they want to? Uh, you know, we, we deal with so many cases at law whereby it's juvenile versus juvenile. You get into court, the juvenile is said to affect the other juvenile. You get into court and they say, I'm in love. But the law is still fighting to protect that person who gets their sentence. Because in as much as this person can consent to date, they cannot consent to have sexual intercourse or have anything else. Uh, under Section 70 of the Criminal Court, which says all sexual in, uh, activities with a minor, which is someone below the age of 16. So at the same time, we are trying to live in a modern day. We cannot eradicate culture, we cannot eradicate religion. But what is the law doing? How are lawmakers connecting with the cultural leaders? How are lawmakers connecting with the religious leaders? Do we have religious leaders who are involved in the lawmaking process, in the implementation? Yes, we might sing about Section 70, we might sing about Section 81 of the Constitution, but to whom are we singing this to? 
mm. to impress mm. the world that we are living mm. or to protect the future, mm. the children, the same children that are sometimes rebellious. You know, when some of us were growing up, I'm very young, but when I was growing up, you know, a hug was something that was, it was extreme. Mm. And I went to, I cannot say it was a D school or it was a Z school, mm. where people were rebellious, they were doing everything. But the homes that we come from are the ones that actually impact some of the behaviors <coughs> that we display at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. If you are told to be at home by six as a child, you get at home by six. And the parent is in some way saying, ah, they probably did not engage in anything that is crossing the line, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But right now, we have kids that are exposed to social media. They know these laws. They yeah. can tell you, oh, there is section 70, there is this, there is that. But what are they doing? What do they want? We are in a space whereby the generation is just the yes. yes, we have those ones who are in the rural areas, the ones that are forced. Mm-hmm. How about the group that is that, in the that forced? Mm-hmm. Because I was also going to ask from your league, you know, are we not, are we not, are we not running away from here? Because like you're saying, they become sexually active very young. Mm-hmm. Uh, is age still relevant? <laughs> Probably need to sit down and say when we take down the age as to 12, 11. Yes. So that means. <laughs> <laughs> as I was saying, the Constitution okay. does not talk about sexual activity. Mm-hmm. The Constitution talks about a marriage and who is a child. It and does it not specify. It says a marriage is between two people, a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. That way it's very clear. You can read. Not men and the men. Yes, no, not men. Woman and a man. Okay. Specifies there. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't talk about sexual activities. It doesn't, it just says if you're 18, you have the ability to found a family. Okay. You have the ability to start your own family. You have the ability to consent to marriage. Whatever marriage you choose, customary or the civil one, the mm-hmm. chapter 5, 1 1. So the constitution itself, it does, it's a gap. And remember, this is our constitution, it's supreme. It has a gap. Mm-hmm. It does not specify, it just talks about the formation of a marriage, the age. Then the court now, it comes down to the activities, the sexual offenses. It does not talk about marriage, it's the court. It talks about the offenses that are there. In section 70, the section 65 about rap. It talk, in rap, it can be done to anyone. But section 70 comes down to the minors, the children, they do not have the ability to legally consent to sexual activity. Because you can have a situation whereby someone uh, touches uh, a 12 year old's breast. How then can you prove that you touched my breast in a 12? Yes, you are 12. But is there evidence that you can provide on the table that you were touched? Mm-hmm. It's only situations whereby you can have a medical report mm-hmm. and say there were tears, vaginal tears. There was penetration, there was this, there was force. But there are some things whereby even children, they go around touching each other. How do we protect them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, the law is saying stop it. Parents are saying stop it. But the generation that we have, in as much as the constitution is not specific, the court is trying. And recently there has been a judgment by our very own Internet J, who is specifically talking about this whole section 70 and how people get to be sentenced. You are a 12 year old. You sleep with a 14 year old, you are dating. Yeah. You are dating. But the law is specific. You sleep with someone who's below the age of 16, you have um, actually crossed mm-hmm. the line. Mm-hmm. So, is it, I, I, I've been asking myself as you were talking, uh, mm-hmm. Leonard Colleague, is it possible that the lawmakers? are in some way protecting themselves because how do you have a gap that is so clear, very transparent gap, Mm -hmm. that the constitution is saying this, Mm -hmm. and it is not getting into the specifics, and yet it is the supreme law. So to whom are we supposed to cry to for that correction? Because in my opinion, there there needs to be, a a correction needs to be done. Because if it is going to be a law that is made by the very same lawmakers who are coming up with the different subsidiary laws, why should it be disconnected to that extent and cause unnecessary ambiguity? It's, uh, it's, it's indeed ambiguous. Mm. It's indeed ambiguous. But when it comes to the lawmaking procedure in Zimbabwe, the fact that the Constitution says if you are not 18, you cannot do this, 
it does not mean we literally focus, we have blinkers, mm -hmm. we focus on what the Constitution is saying. Mm -hmm. These other uh, statutory provisions, statutory instruments that are there, they are there to uplift and uh, actually concretize what the Constitution is saying. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the Children's Act, that's why we have um, the Criminal mm -hmm. Court. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, indeed, yeah, we are having a lot of ideas from different angles, and indeed, people are applying their mind. So, I think let's yeah, take a short break. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll hold you. You'll continue after we take a short break. Mm -hmm. So, it's fine yeah, to our viewers. Yeah, I think you're following and are really figuring out what's really transparent uh, regarding our kids' early child marriages versus the law. So, we'll take a short break and we'll be coming back shortly. Thank you. Welcome back. Now we are taking uh, a further look into this topic. I think it's getting to be hotter now. There's mm -hmm. many ideas are sprouting from different angles. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's start with the Chacha Mkwena. Yeah, you had a point. Can you... What I wanted to say mm -hmm. is that uh, as we are looking at the constitution, looking at the culture, uh, is it the government doing more enough to implement the current laws which we are having? Mm -hmm. Because the laws are there. Mm -hmm. But you find that in most cases, these laws are not properly, or they just ignore them. They don't implement them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Because if you sleep with an underage girl, you're supposed to go to court and to court and send them. Mm -hmm. But now you find that maybe ninety percent of the cases mm -hmm. they just go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Just very little cases that mm -hmm. one which are being brought into attention. Yeah. So I think the government, on the other hand, must play its part. Mm -hmm. Because the lawmakers, mm -hmm. which are parliamentarians, they just make the laws. Mm -hmm. But they are not the ones who are implementing those laws. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the government must go down hard mm -hmm. on those people and implement those laws mm -hmm. so that people can be scared away. Yeah. Okay, do you mean that there has to be tough judgments or do you mean to say that uh, they, they have to revise the age uh, limit or what? No, they don't have to revise anything. Mm -hmm. The only thing, the sentences are there, everything is there. Mm -hmm. But the issue is not, it is not mm -hmm. being properly yeah. enforced. implemented. Yeah. Enforced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enforced. How, okay, how can it be it could enforced seeing that uh, probably we have, uh, like on the Danish show, most of the marriages that we are dealing with, it's uh, maybe 17 years, 18 years, mm -hmm. 16 years. Mm -hmm. And the mother, con the mothers to those kids, they consent to that yeah. uh, from both ends, and then they get into a home. No one is there to report. So how mm -hmm. then can those issues be addressed when there is no one to raise uh, that issue? To? We have organization like you said. They must go out. Mm -hmm. They must reach out to the people mm -hmm. so that if they go out and say they go to school, they go to the yes, forum of people in the rural areas. They give people examples that these are kids are suffering. Yeah. He has got a child at the age of 15, 16. She is not married because most boys, once or even these other big people, uh, maybe about uh, a person who is about 50 or 60 years, in pregnant, somebody is 18. And then uh, that person is married, mm -hmm. and the wife will say, No, you can't marry another second wife. And uh, the man will say, Okay, fine, I'm going to support the kid, mm -hmm. and I'm going to support the man. But that is not the end of the story. Is that what is we don't want? Mm -hmm. If that person is supporting, he must pay for his sins. How? Oh. The, the government, the police, they have to come in. 
even we at the society, the yes, community, yes. we, the community, must say, no, that is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the in-laws agreed, mm -hmm. but that is not right, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. you see? That's what I wanted so, to uh, say. If that we is. take it that way, that, okay, fine, you both of you, you agreed, and if you both of you agreed, you, both of you must go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Both okay. of you, you must go. Okay. Okay, you can so come in. Where should we start from? Educating the kids, the, these young ones, or the parents? Mm -hmm. I think there's I a, want a to missing say. link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah, have both, to go yeah, back yeah. right down to the roots. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but both the parents oh, are believing what, the whole system. We, what we you know what? to do mm -hmm. uh, is that we have to start teaching these girls their rights. Yes. That mm -hmm. no matter even if your parents agree Say no. that they have received Lobola on the other side, you have got the right to go and report and protect yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go to UK and just touch uh, a girl or uh, your child in BT, the police will descend on you like mm -hmm. there's a robber which has happened. Yeah. Yeah. So same applies here. We have to go out, reach out to schools and tell them, okay, fine. It's like a relative mm -hmm. raping another, maybe a niece or someone. And the people, they sit down, they say, nah, no, he's our aunt, you mm -hmm. know, we can't do this. It's not good to in the public, in the eyes of the public. Let's just talk it as a family. No, it's not right, it it's is. wrong. Mm -hmm. Something which is wrong, it's wrong, must not condemn it. Yeah, okay. I wanted to, to support Sintate okay. here mm -hmm. to say um, I like to refer to these things as public secrets. Okay. As, as Liseho, we come across such things. Okay. We do have awareness campaigns in schools and communities where we talk about child rights. But then when you deal with these parents or these adults, you, you, let's, you say an example that um, probably in this village we have a young girl who's been married off to an affluent man. And you know, you hear this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they, they mama to say they agree, mm -hmm. but then now, if you bring in a policeman to say, let's report these cases, they don't. Mm -hmm. So that's our challenge, and I want to say, I want to agree with Ntate, to say we need um, adults that also look out for, for, for these kids. Even if you are a neighbor, you know, you need to reinforce whatever other organizations are doing to say, but can't you see the harm that's being done to your son? Because also son, sons are also married off to other families, you know, not only girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, we need to come together um, as, as people, as Zimbabweans, because the constitution is ours as Zimbabweans. We have to hold each other accountable for oh, our constitution. Yes, yes. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can try to uh, maybe uh, help one another in addressing these issues. But the thing is now, when they are in agreement, mm -hmm. are you able now to break into that agreement yeah. that has been uh, established between the two families yeah. for you to, 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 to enforce the law? Sometimes. You, you, uh, uh, are you not closed out? Yeah. Because they already agreed. Yeah. And they are also like uh, taking this from, I mean, the cultural background mm -hmm. where we are coming from. It has been like that. Most of our parents, they got married at 18, 17, mm -hmm. 16, and, and, and it was the norm of the day. So now, to get into another shift, uh, is it really possible? Where are we going? Where are we uh, heading? I was, I was also going to look at it from this angle. Where probably one of the greatest challenges that we face is we, we haven't proved to these societies that the psychological disadvantages mm -hmm. that come in any way yeah. supersede the financial benefits. Mm -hmm. also, once we don't strike that, 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 that overlay, mm -hmm. we always have a problem. Once we we'll look at it, in the end of the, it's a financial decision. Yeah. And if, if, if we don't convince me that. The psychological effects that I'm going to suffer supersede the benefit that I'm going to I always go for the financial benefit. Yeah. Okay. Because that's what I can see. And that's why you find a mother who was a victim of childbearing does not have a problem mm -hmm. taking their child into the same way. Yeah. Because they're looking at it from a financial perspective. Okay. But once we have a system of trying to conscientize people of the disadvantages that come with childbearing, probably we'll see. That's true. Yeah. All right. Uh, is it true that it is purely financial? What if the two are really in love? Uh, they are financially okay. stable, yeah. coming from good backgrounds. I, we, I, I, I do want to say, uh, like, yes. how, how can uh, a seventy-year-old uh, man uh, be in love with a fourteen-year-old? <laughs> uh, a fourteen-year-old does not know love. Mm. Hey. Ah no. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Maybe um, 
um, there are also situations whereby uh, these young kids or girls specifically mm -hmm. are married off to all the people for the purposes of legal, yeah. for the purposes of mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. or medical, traditional healing mm -hmm. of some sort. Is their love there? Is your love there? Yeah. That's just the exploitation of the young ones. We are saying the law is there. Okay. The law is there. Mm -hmm. The law is clear. But the implementation is also there. Yeah. We see it in courts every day. These kids are rebellious as well. Mm -hmm. But those ones that are not rebellious, what are we doing about it? The rebellious ones, yes, even if you are a 12 year old, uh, Section 64 of the Criminal Court, do you know to tell that a section, then there's a 12 years. Could mm -hmm. at 12 years, you are able to be in a relationship. I'm not taking it uh, verbatim, mm -hmm. but that's just the broader mm -hmm. sense of it. It's mm -hmm. saying at 12 you can be able to be in a relationship, but it's just saying you're able to have sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's saying. Mm -hmm. But then you get into court, there is a 12 year old, there is a 14 year old, and they are in love. Or there is a 12 year old and there is a 23 year old. The girl is 12. Mm -hmm. So they say they are in love, but still you have uh, broke section 70 by having sexual, sexual intercourse with a minor. Mm -hmm. Does it mean because you have exposed yourself saying we are dating or you have consented, does it mean the law will not protect the girl child? It protects them because that person that would have engaged in sexual intercourse with someone who is 12 and below is, or 12 and above, they still get their sentence. They are not supposed to have sexual intercourse mm -hmm. with someone of that age. So my point is the law is there. Yeah. The lawmakers are doing their best. Uh, this section 70 issue is actually a debated uh, uh, situation currently in, in the law, currently right now. Mm -hmm. Even there's been new sentencing guidelines in terms of this, because you know someone can actually go uh, for community service for having sexual intercourse with someone who's 14. Mm -hmm. Because that person would have indicated that they were in a relationship. The law is saying, yes, you can consent to be in a relationship, but to have sexual intercourse, no, you can't. So they get to punish, then they don't give a, a heavy sentence because they're saying, well, you were not doing it willingly. There are these special circumstances that you were openly dating. People knew that you were dating. The girl consented to the dating. The law is still there. Because if we're saying the lawmakers are not really trying so hard to implement these people who are dating okay. younger girls or yeah. sleeping with them would be going scot free, mm -hmm. but they are getting their three years, they are getting their four years, they are getting their uh, community service. They are can, still can I just punished. come in there, yes. uh, Leonard, uh, colleague? Yes. Are, are we not divorcing ourselves a bit much from like um, what Miss what Doc Nyanya uh, talked about earlier that? What is the situation on the ground? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, law make, the lawmakers are trying their best, the enforcers are there, and so on. But buttressing from what you said earlier on, that um, it is the home also. Yeah. That is the initial point, the focal point mm -hmm. of how then our societies are shaped. Mm -hmm. Because broken individuals in a broken home eventually overlap into a broken okay. society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what what how how do we solidify mm -hmm. this home as the focal point of the stature of society mm -hmm. or what then becomes mm -hmm. society. And I also would like to say it seems our talk although Google tried to at least say something about what um, about to address my concern. It seems society and the law is all about the girl, girl child, child this, the girl child that. Mm -hmm. What happens to the boy child? Mm -hmm. Today we are here talking about um, early marriages. We, you rarely get cases mm -hmm. that are talked about, about early marriages for boys. boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, we are saying, Dr. Mnyanyi talked about psychological effects. And it, mm -hmm. We are saying, because today we are talking about early marriages concerning the girl child. Yeah. But what are we talking about concerning the boy child? I feel like the boy child to a certain extent has just been Thing put on the periphery yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. Because even the law when it talks about oh, two underage children, this and that, mm -hmm. it will really then 
address issues concerning the boy child. But today, where are we with the boy child? Yeah. We've got Jigunduru Murod, and usually Jigunduru ka asima namskan. Mm -hmm. Usually Jigunduru shino garaba bridge, the chima doro three hundred percent alcohol. Muko mm -hmm. man. Yeah. And it. So so what is it? Like I said earlier on, what are the priorities? Because this young man and this young lady are tomorrow's buyers of the products that we are purporting yeah. to then produce in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just then has this effect, domino effect, that mm -hmm. may be a negative domino effect. I think, I think you got a point. Yeah. But at the same time, the responsibility resides in the family. Yeah. And, and the law must guard that. But, um, and it goes without saying that... Um, an empowered family, it's a strong family. Mm -hmm. An empowered community, it's a strong community. Mm -hmm. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, how do we then <clears throat> pull abreast mm -hmm. from the family setup mm -hmm. and embracing the law mm -hmm. and from a family or people who are residing in suburban areas mm -hmm. in comparison with those who are in rural or remote areas? Mm -hmm. How do we pull abreast in a point mm -hmm. where we get to understand the synergy be uh, between the two people. The two. Mm -hmm. And if we could strike that, I think we'll become a better society. Mm -hmm. But it can't be that um, parents are negating their responsibility to, to government, in mm -hmm. a sense, or, you know, the law must do this, the law must yeah. do that. I, as a, as a father, mm -hmm. I need to impress and inculcate a sense of responsibility to my children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I need to go all out and family so Mm -hmm. and teach my kids about how to protect themselves, meaning mm -hmm. in my absence, mm -hmm. and, and empower them in a manner and way that when they go out, I know that they will be the ambassador of my family. Mm -hmm. And I can derive pride and confidence in knowing that I've done my best in teaching mm -hmm. them, meaning to say they will be able to take care of themselves and they will be able to make informed decisions about their well-being and about their lives. Yeah. Then we come to the situation that we are all talking about of things that are happening mainly in the remote areas of kids who are being sacrificed. Mm. It can't be mm -hmm. that I take my own child and sacrifice the child for, you know, uh, how do I sleep at night? How do I feel? We must shy away from justifying the unjustifiable. Mm. And hence I'm saying, the more we... we, we we create awareness campaigns to send the message across to say this and this is wrong and it's unjustifiable. And we must be firm around that. Then it will carry much bravery. And then we'll be able to pull up rest. Because many a times we talk about these things, like in this setup, mm -hmm. you're all talking fancy English. Yeah. But those people that are in the remote areas, at times some of them, majority of them, they don't even understand what yeah. we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And they are the victims in the main. Mm -hmm. So in the main, the message is not being filtered down accordingly. Thank you. What must, must, what, what must be done there? Then we need to, to create awareness campaigns and use the language that the people understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And devise means and mechanism of getting vehicles that would carry that message across mm -hmm. and the message will reside and find resonance on the ground. Mm -hmm. And the reason when we do that, we need to bring traditional leaders who are the custodians of those people mm -hmm. in rural areas to say, this and this has got these repercussions. Yeah. And the well-being of the child, psychological, as uh, Dr. Minyanyi was saying, are uh, this and this, and it's, it, it destroys and homorages the well-being of a person mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. and, th and those are things that we never look at. Okay. Mm -hmm. We just look at the sacrifice to say, you know, the next two, 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 two years mm -hmm. going forward, as a father, you know, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And what about what's happening to my child? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. That's a very good point. Uh, uh, having special vehicles that must uh, spread the message even in the deep rural areas mm -hmm. so they get to be conscientized about the consequences of mm -hmm. early child marriages. Mm -hmm. But now, if I look at the traditional leaders, leaders most of them, uh, they actually uphold the tradition. They do, not, they do not use the instruments, I think you can agree mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. that they are using in the court of law mm -hmm. to, to address these issues. They use their traditional values mm -hmm. to settle these matters. Mm -hmm. So it simply means already there is a divergency between what is uh, the norm in the, in, in, the crim in the criminal courts and what's happening with the traditional mm -hmm. leaders. Mm -hmm. How then do we marry the two? Yeah. Uh, it seems like we are running part two parallels, yeah. whereby we have this own tradition running on its own, mm -hmm. and uh, the, law, the, the criminal court, uh, law, the law is taking its own yeah. tangent. Yeah. So how then are we going to come well, to I think, a... I think you are right, Mr. Yes, because yes. 
I mean, we all know these these these, these people who practice child marriages. Why are we not getting buses full of police? We just round them and arrest them. It seems there's a system that also. <laughs> I mean, we know this. We just get buses full of police. We we'll grab them, we we'll take them to jail. We we'll take everyone into jail. Yeah. yeah, so I think there's a system. Even the police are there. I get it. The ones that we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, because, look, I mean, they are not they are not operating in the periphery, <laughs> they are in communities. So we know them because they're in the communities and communities can explain. But I'm really them. getting I'm really getting to understand you know the, the issues that are coming into into play to say sometimes we also need like I'm looking at it from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. People want the benefit now, not knowing that if we invest in the child mm -hmm. Their, their future could actually solve most, most of their problems. problems. Yeah. And I'm looking at the benefit now, but if I adopt a long-term dimension, it, it says, if I am to invest in my child, allow them to have a future, go to school, go to university, mm -hmm. when they come back, the benefit could actually be more than the, the, the short term. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Doctor, you're coming back to my point. When are you saying that from a point of strength and information? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hence, I'm saying, Ori, we need to have institution like this one yeah. and this institution yeah. go to where there is a dire need of Maybe, what we're yeah. deliberating yes. upon yes. Yeah. and do that those workshops. Yeah. Then there will be a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. And in no time, agile. we won't have this kind of setup mm -hmm. again. Yeah. The family is a primary institution mm -hmm. in yes. primary socializing institution. Yeah, yeah. Abantuana. Cool. And now the challenge that's there mm -hmm. now is maybe in Zakulumanga in the modern setup, which we find that um, the mom is working, the dad is working, or maybe there's no mom and dad, but the primary caregivers, the adults, they're all occupied yes. in 17. Mm -hmm. Now, Tina Skula, we knew, I'll make an example, I knew when the 8 p.m. news that Kundungundu goes off, mm -hmm. it's my time to go to bed, mm -hmm. you know? It was not negotiable. Yes. But now you find, Wuti, we have kids who are watching Mubango. What's a 12-year-old? <laughs> 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 It's a family or it's a family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they watch this so big. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> sex, you know, there's kissing scenes. Yes, yes. You know, a 12 year old also wants to kiss. I mm -hmm. mean, so what are the adults or the primary caregivers doing? You know, as much as we can say, as Lisi, who we are trying to go to school, a primary school, and say, your rights are this, you mustn't engage in sex. But they, they see these shows, and the parent is there. You know, they are watching together. We used to be shy. Oh, there's kissing. You know, you, you hide yeah, yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. But now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, you brought a very uh, crucial mm -hmm. point it did. But now, looking at uh, uh, those behaviors, mm -hmm. kissing behavior and everything else, uh, let's now maybe take it uh, from a, a, a biological perspective. Uh, let's take it. Uh, let's take this this stage mm -hmm. as uh, an adolescent stage. Yeah. What are the behaviors around adolescence exactly. that are changing? And I think their bodies already geared mm -hmm. to be into it, and they are now being deprived totally. You see, they can date and they can not have intercourse. Mm -hmm. So, what exactly are they exactly supposed to do in that relationship? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's, let's <laughs> take a pause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, indeed. Yeah, let's take a short break. We'll pause in the next play. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, so let's uh, take a further look into this case. Uh, I, I realize that a lot of people are burning in trying to express <laughs> their sentiments regarding the, uh, what I just highlighted. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll start with uh, Dr. Mkwen. I wanted to ask you the yes. something. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. There's a case in court. Mm -hmm. uh, there are proceedings. Uh, there's a, a minor child here. There's an adult here. Yeah. May you be specific with the years of the man and child? Okay, may, maybe let's say the child is, is 14, okay. the man is maybe about 50. Okay. And then here comes a gogo -go who stays with this child. Mm -hmm. And he comes and pleads with the court, please, uh, this man is the one who is taking care of me. So if you send this man, uh, everything 
knows and where what does the court say? When it comes to the law in sexual offences, uh, it's um, sexual offences are easy to fabricate and very hard to tell. But you can, I can say the chief here tried to uh, uh, force himself on me. Mm -hmm. But how do I then prove? And if you are genuinely specifically saying the court should not sentence, this girl is actually admitting that this man has been sexually harassing this child. Mm -hmm. So it's now clear. And what also the courts look at is the age gap. Uh, the court is very lenient when it comes to the age gap. If I'm 14, he is 21, it's better. 14 and 15, no. no. It's very impossible for you to get uh, a fine or community service because those are extremes. Yeah. We can say a 14-year-old can date a 23-year-old. We can see most of the marriages that are there, there's a 10-year-old gap. So imagine uh, my husband, he's probably a 40. But when I was in grade one, and give me that person mm. when I was in grade one, it's a no no. Even culturally or socially, per se, it can't do. But you have to wait for that person to mature to be able. But a 21 year old, they can marry a 50 year old mm -hmm. because they can consent to that. It's their own decision. It's not influenced by a gogo who's saying he takes care of us. That 14 year old is being exploited. So the courts will make sure that that guy gets a life imprisonment, a heavy sentence, mm -hmm. custodial one. Unlike when someone is 21 and the child is 14, okay. and there's admission that they have been dating, mm -hmm. so you will get a lesser child. The age gap is small, and there has been a relationship established. So he just gets uh, a sentence below, uh, under section 70 of the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, now coming back into the issue that I highlighted. We've got something to say regarding that. I, I want to say okay. um, there's this theorist, um, Sigmund Freud. Hey? He talks about stages from zero, you know, until, until. So you talked about the adolescent stage. Of course, it, it's that stage where now parents need to to sit down with their children. And I think that's why schools are coming in with sex education to try to guide them and say, okay, these things are there, but now we feel like you're not ready enough to, to engage because if you engage, you will have unintended pregnancies or if you engage, you are going to contract sexually transmitted diseases, sexually transmitted infections. So yeah, I think that's where now we need to work together. You know, I think Udala Gautua, Spirit so so won't do what he um he is not my biological father but he can sit me down and talk to me to say hi in Kuboni and Tanamem Kwako in Bonangazani Suenzo my sick. We are actually losing I think our moral fabric there what you are saying. Mina, I only guide what happens in my household. You know, that's what we need to incorporate again, or that's what we need to, to bring back because the stage is there and we also we all know what if you don't shape it um, at that yeah. stage, it, it goes off. And then now we have, as she was saying, we have drug addicts, you know, we have sexual offenders. So I think, yeah. Are we not being cruel? Mm -hmm. in, uh, that's the stage when uh, uh, the, the sexual motive, the, I mean, the sex motive really? is high. <laughs> it's too high. And then you're crying. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back then, people as adolescents mm. did not have that drive that mm -hmm. people have now. Are you saying the biological makeup is now different from back in the 80s? No, they, 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 they would get into marriages. That's yeah. when they were married. Because but they would just enter into yeah. it and then they go You know what I want to say? Marriage. I want to say, Udi, as don't say it. I'm not going to 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 say it. I think Udala corrects me that. Udala didn't we say if um, a man wants to take another young wife, right? They would take them, but they wouldn't indulge until maybe they've reached a certain level where they see that maybe now they can handle it. Wasn't it the case? in some cases. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. But now if I say in some we're saying we're also recognizing that we knew what in it. Not so you're saying you're really showing the way you know the reality. Yeah. 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 There are lots of implications, health wise, psychological wise, social wise. Okay. You know, yeah. So that's why we can't say we are taking a 12 year old and say because now we are adjusting. You know, okay. we are. As much as we want to adjust, there are some things that you can't just adjust to. Right. Yeah. But is, is the, is the, uh, this young was not ready. 
uh, they think they are ready, but they are not ready. Do, do, do we have twenty-five year olds who are not ready? We do. We do. Yeah. Maybe again, mentally. I, I, I think yeah. education okay. plays a significant role <laughs> okay. in yeah. terms of you know having information. That is why mm-hmm. back in the day, um, they would have you know um, cultural schools that you know the people initiation. Y- yeah, initiations yeah. that you know kids go through yeah. you know as per stage. And those those things were very important because mm-hmm. they were teaching them um, about life. They were yeah. teaching them about how to take care of themselves. You know how to. Um, react and respond to their bodies as and when. Okay. Okay. So, so, so that is no longer there. Mm-hmm. And now we have resorted to raising our kids with you know um, social media, media, modern technology, and it's not controlled because your child will never come to you with such things. Yeah. They know it's a no go area. Yet they 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 they, they peruse them, mm-hmm. yeah, and that is a problem. So, so. Again, as parents, we need to own up. Mm-hmm. As, as you were saying, as a society, we need to own up. And, 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 and until such time where we firmly say, you are because I am, somebody's child is my child, mm-hmm. then we'll revert back to how you know, our forebearers were doing it. And again, the society will sober up. Mm-hmm. And also at the same time, I think we need to agree that um, culture and cultural norms evolve. Yes. Why can't we evolve and redefine where we are mm-hmm. and be resolute about it? then we'll find it much easier to navigate some of the challenges that we are faced with. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, in our society, there are so many social ills that are being allowed to go unabated. Yeah. And it's because, as parents, we are not owning up. Mm-hmm. We are not taking our rightful position. Mm-hmm. And you go to schools, the teachers are tired mm-hmm. because parents are taking their kids and just throw them to school. Exactly. Yet, for now, they are not parenting their own kids. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with a child who has defeated their, their own parents at home. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, when you're a teacher. It's, yeah, it's difficult. difficult. It's difficult. So I think as a society and as a, as, as, as a community and as parents in the main, let's, let's own up. Mm-hmm. Let's take our rightful position and do what is necessarily needed. Then we'll be able to ameliorate a number of social issues that we are faced with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Input. Okay. The end, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. It's fine. I'll come back to you. Okay. Then, yeah. uh, okay. I want to support uh, that. We are seeing uh, when you talk of parenting, you know, we are, we are living in a lot of challenges. Yes. Most of the parents now are right in the street. They're on the street selling the, the child's, uh, the children are into woman. Mm-hmm. Who is parenting those kids? Exactly. Kids? What are they learning in the absence of the parents? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think we are supposed to go back to the family as well. Some of us have uh, alluded to mm-hmm. The parents are supposed to teach these uh, kids um, life skills. Yes. They empower their kids or <coughs> um, um, life skills. And then we take that to the schools as well. I think the schools are trying. Yeah. The, the curriculum has been changed. That uh, aspect of life skills is there. Yeah. I think that we should hammer, they should hammer much on that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that we don't lose out on the kids. Okay. Because um, to tell you the truth, the kids are not being parents. Exactly. Okay. What is the behavior currently yeah, in a school setup? How would they behave? Ah, you see, uh, yeah, like what Shantafia said, we have different behaviors. Mm-hmm. Some people, some of the people are so bully. Mm-hmm. Some of them are, you know, they have low self-esteem because of this gap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some people are rich, some are not. They don't they do, they have lots and... He has. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, I think uh, it's affecting most of our Okay, mm-hmm. in terms of butter, are they eating? Are they eating coffee? Can you please stop? Okay, 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 okay. Let me come back to you. What I wanted to say is that. Okay. The culture which we had before yes, mm-hmm. is different now. Yeah. Uh, I was in South Africa some about two months back. Mm-hmm. I was in Makad, there's a cousin of mine, he teaches at Mjimel in a reside in Makad. And they said, But why can't you you teach here in Makad in town? Mm-hmm. He said, Hey, no, I uh, the kids which are, are teaching there at Mjimel are different from the kids here. Mm-hmm. The kids in Jamaica, most of them, they go to initiation schools. Mm-hmm. Yes, in South Africa, still there. Yeah. Even the young ladies, they go there. They are taught 
if you are having a boy, don't allow him to touch you here. Yes. To touch you there. Same applies to boys. He said, uh, I'm a headmaster in Timur. I don't have a problem of discipline. Mm -hmm. Because most kids who come here, they come from They've good parents. It. But the kids here in town, they are totally different. They are different animals. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they come with guns. Mm -hmm. and they are bullying. They are doing everything. Because those girls, the father and the mother are not there. Yeah. Yeah. They are hustling mm -hmm. to get yeah. a better life. Yes. Yeah. Forgetting about the, the future of their kids. Yeah, that, that is the problem. Okay. So here in our country, we are no longer having those initiation schools. Mm -hmm. They are no longer there. It's just something else. And then uh, there, I was speaking to another cousin of mine. He said, ah, but you are no longer going to church. He said, ah, no. In our church, once you send your, your, your son to an initiation school, they will cut you from church for a period of about a year mm -hmm. without going to school, or without going to, to church. church. Yeah. But he said, so why, why do you prefer? He said, no. For me, it's better. For my son to go to an initiation school because when she comes, when he comes from there, he's a better person than before. Yeah. So I think on that one again, we have to revisit that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. I, I want to say we mustn't forget that um, parents are the first role models. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you as a parent are not a good role model, how are you expecting someone from a different institution, a school or a religious institution to role model your child? Because your children will imitate your behavior because they think that's right. So that's why we're coming in to say maybe in these families that are largely patriarchal and um, still infringe on child rights, we are, we are trying to to hammer or to teach them on, on rights. But we, we also need us to introspect as parents if we are safe parenting you know like now in cities we're not only facing early child marriages but there's drug and substance abuse you know you find that the dad comes home late you know 3 a.m drunk shouting what are you teaching your son okay. you know and you can't expect a teacher to tell your child not to drink no. When, when, when you're giving an example, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's my point. So I also want to address her point of why we seem to be neglecting the boy child. I think firstly, it's because in Zimbabwe, um, we are largely female. We are in terms of population, there's a lot of females and also our country is patriarchal, like I've said. So these things started from affirmative action, trying to create spaces for, for females to take up space, to go to schools, to take up leadership positions. So we are still, because we believe that the boy child is already at a certain advantage. Not that we should neglect them entirely, mm -hmm. but we are also trying to, to create a space. There's still, I mentioned it earlier on, that there's still some preference, you know, some, Boys are the ones that are taken to school and girls are taught to sit at home because there's no money. So that's why now we keep saying the girl child this, the girl child that, so that we... So is the girl child issue not... Uh, um, uh, um, is it not vice versa mm -hmm. in trying to solve a problem, in trying to, okay. to fill another hole, you're also digging another hole? To, to some extent we are, to some extent we are, because yes. we end up neglecting these dads who are going to be the fathers of their households and they get to make decisions, yeah. All right, so there has to be a balance, that's what Yes, we need to try to so yeah, As much as we are now. putting attention to the girl child, mm -hmm. we should also not neglect exactly. the boy child. Exactly. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Doc, what do you have to say now? Yeah, I think we, we, are, we are getting somewhere. Okay. So probably as, as a way, way, some kind of way forward, but we were agreeing that we benefited a lot from these initiation schools mm -hmm. and this customary. Perhaps we need to find a way of recreating them in the modern world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not necessarily the way it has been done before, but mm -hmm. the concept could actually be conceptualized. We as academics, mm -hmm. we should also come in and try to create a modern Mm -hmm. A practice that, that 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 resembles that kind of practice, so that our young people in their modernity could also embrace these these ideas that we are trying to share. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about this for the beginning and the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So then we look at it and say, if this can be addressed in this totality, it will actually benefit the society. Right? Ah, wonderful indeed. Okay, this could be your last sentiment, right? Yeah, okay, okay, now over to your last sentiment, man. I I will continue talking about. Uh, the family, okay. the foundation okay. for society and okay. foundation for the nation at large. Okay. So let's go back, as Dr. Mnani is saying, that uh, 
let the family be the core, mm -hmm. but let's also try to modernize because yes, the cultural effects, we see them now, the traditional ways of doing things, we see how they benefited society. But now they are no longer in practice and we are now living in a different era. Yeah. What what can we do to marry mm -hmm. that tradition? Mm -hmm. And this TikTok that we have today, mm -hmm. how are we going to use TikTok to our advantage mm -hmm. than to complain about it? Mm -hmm. So we need to modernize. Mm -hmm. But the question now is how ready are we in our minds mm -hmm. to move from that mindset mm -hmm. to a different one? Okay. Because now if you sit down with me that he will tell you I look initiation schools are always the best mm -hmm. because the way to go. Mm -hmm. But how do you move on that mm -hmm. to say, okay, that it TikTok, yes, yes, mm -hmm. the mass. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so that gap also needs to be bridged. Mm -hmm. I, I just still believe the family is the source. Mm -hmm. And if that root is fixed, okay. then we are on. Okay, wonderful. Okay, over to you, ma'am. Your for your last sentiments regarding the topic of today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to say, uh, I think there is need for us to reach out. Yeah. Okay. Especially those kids in the rural areas. Okay. Let's uh, come up with some uh, plans. I think to go and reach out to the the they need to be empowered. Okay. Yeah. We have left them behind. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Over to you, ma'am. Your last words regarding the topic. Um, yeah, as, as ma'am has said, mm -hmm. the, I feel like all of us um, should take up this responsibility mm -hmm. to try educate other people. We have relatives in rural areas, you know. That phone call when you're talking about sugar, Kuluma, you know, you know, stop this, you know, you can report this, this, this. So you... You, you widen their horizon mm -hmm. or their imagination, you know, okay. when, you, when you highlight. Don't only leave it to the government or you want to blame the law enforcers, but you as an individual, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing, you know? Um, activism, there's other organizations you know, that I'm talking about, Lisa, huh? okay. but you can volunteer your time to say, let's go to my village because I think there's a gap there, you know? It doesn't have to be financial resources, just volunteering your time to say, I think, or you are reporting, I think there's something in that household. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to pay a visit to okay. find out. Whist Whistleblowing is the word. Mm -hmm. You need to find out what's happening there. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility. So ngenje esemakhaya ukuthi khona si ende i child marriage laba fana laba sikhulu because now the reason why people don't talk about boys is because it's a topic that's swept under the mat you know it, it's also up on us ukuthi sikhulu ukuthi hayi umfana wakho nazivane ngale mbona ngazani akagcinwa ngabashi indaba singakhulu mini ngakho we need to talk 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 you know talk about it, make a lot of noise about it, in the end, we'll achieve positive results. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, over to you, Ntate. Yeah, that is this issue is very rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yes. 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 To say the things, I think the topic like this. Uh, most of kids, they go to school a distance of about 20 to 30 kilometers. Yeah. yeah. And they they knock off at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. They start walking back. Mm -hmm. What happens in within the path mm -hmm. is a different issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think even the government must come in and we're talking about this issue which was raised by one the, the boys. Mm -hmm. We have to protect them too. Mm -hmm. Because some of them have been abused by our house girls. Mm -hmm. They are abused in the name is just silent. But the brave parents some will take the present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some will just keep quiet. And uh, if you keep quiet, and then this boy will think, ah, this thing is nice, so I have to continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is wrong. Mm -hmm. he, he, people, the kids must be told that in order for you to achieve in life, you have to do ABCD. Mm -hmm. You can so look at Mr. Doctor now, look at the doctor is driving a nice car. Mm -hmm. So if you don't plan and do ABCD, you won't achieve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So you're coming with the issue of uh, children must be pointed to good role models yes, in the society yes, 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 yes. so that they have to learn from them. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dad. In, in our area, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if uh, Dr. Marubi arrives, mm -hmm. you know, you feel, even elders, 
will be busy running wanting to see mm -hmm. Marub, Dr. Marub. Mm -hmm. He's around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he is there, they are all modeling. <laughs> all right. Even when you vote voting, they will tell you, no, no, no. We are not interested at that one, the ABCD. We mm -hmm. want Marub. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So he's the role model. Yes, the role model. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, so our learned friend, what are your sentiments? How do you uh, uh, compile, how do you round up this, uh, this topic of today? Okay, yeah. so much, okay. This was uh, very insightful, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I'll continue to say the law is there. Mm -hmm. okay. The law is there, the gaps are there, mm -hmm. but the gaps can be uh, pulled up mm -hmm. by the community. Mm -hmm. by the society, mm -hmm. where there is no awareness, mm -hmm. we can still move down to that level. Mm -hmm. There are still things, you know, the law is being preached everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think the master of the high court is doing um, some campaign of some sort of moving around those remote areas, mm -hmm. educating people about inheritance law. Mm -hmm. They are trying. Mm -hmm. okay. They are moving around. People that are learning, they are moving around the sun, going down to those areas where we think people are disadvantaged. The law is there, the okay. awareness is there. Mm -hmm. But centering around child marriages, there are issues to do with sexual intercourse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are issues to do with rape. Mm -hmm. There are issues to do with abuse. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, we are talking about this. There are people who are rebellious and stuff, but the law is still there mm -hmm. to protect mm -hmm. our children. The law is still there. And in case someone comes across such issues, they should not sit on it. Mm -hmm. They should be quick to report. Okay. They should be quick to tell the next possible person mm -hmm. who is not going to say you are lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should go to your village head. You should go to places where by you will be held. Because the mm -hmm. more you sit on it, the more unbelievable it is. Mm -hmm. You cannot present it. That's where whereby people end up saying the law is unfair. Mm -hmm. Because you are here presenting a rape issue which happened in twenty nineteen, but here we are in twenty twenty. So in as much as we want to avoid child marriages are centered around sex mm -hmm. and poverty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do not think these issues are still there in places where there is so much economic development. Mm -hmm. Children cannot be exploited like that. Mm -hmm. It's only in countries where by poverty is still at large. Mm -hmm. So child marriages are centered around poverty and sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. So the moment we deal with those wings, mm -hmm. we are winning. Yeah. Okay. The law is there to ensure that people will be that's all I Ah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Now I'll end uh, with uh, our colleague uh, from South Africa, uh, the chief himself. Let's hear the chief's sentiments as we wind up to a close. No, I think I think the um, learned colleague took words out right. of my mouth. Okay. Say, yes, yes. Um, child marriage is centered around poverty mm -hmm. and abusing a girl child mm -hmm. and that needs to be condemned in the strongest possible terms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think in the main um as society as people as mankind we need to strive to have a sober society that is um in tune with itself mm -hmm. that is kind mm -hmm. to kids mainly a girl child mm -hmm. and we need to empower a girl child a, a boy child to mm -hmm. say um you are more stronger when you protect your family. You are more stronger when you protect your sister child. And mm -hmm. sister child does not necessarily mean your father or your mother's mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. It simply means the next fellow. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, we will be able to build and strive to build a society that is educated, a society that is progressive, mm -hmm. and will be, where we will all be able to live in harmony mm -hmm. without infringing mm -hmm. on each other's rights and, and, and well-being. But also, I think a call needs to be made to um, our leaders in remote areas mm -hmm. and, and parents in the main to say, um, let's lead with sobriety. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and by so doing, we'll be able to create legacies for ourselves and our people will remember us for doing things that were tangible and things that protected mankind. Mm -hmm. But in general, as Africans, um, let's remember our heritage mm -hmm. and embrace the future. Thank you so very much. All right, all right. Thank you so much, dear. I think let's we all deserve a pump up. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, all right. All right, yeah, indeed. I also want to hijack this moment in thanking you all, the panelists, for the, the contribution that you have done, uh, the justice that you have actually done to this topic. It's indeed a topic that is in topical, mm -hmm. you know, as we handle DNA issues all over the country. 
we realize that uh, there's a lot of issues to do with child marriages. So we have got child marriages, we have got abuse, we have got uh, domestic violence, yes. we have got child neglect. Mm -hmm. So all these are uh, themes that are arising out of our DNA platform. We are going to uh, weave them on this uh, DNA hotspot whereby we bring experts from different backgrounds yeah, in trying to address and see how best we can advocate, to see how best we can initiate, to see how best we can uh, bring solutions to these issues. So we are also going to find ways in trying to go into the deep rural areas uh, so that we can also have their own input regarding the same topics. So you continue to follow us on this same platform as we explore different themes. So this is National Academy of the Day and